This question comes from weary underscore yogurt. <laughs> I want to stay fully nude at home with my BF. I, 18, female, live with my BF and want to stay fully nude at our house. I think it would be more comfortable for me. Any advices? Ooh, let's see. So let's rule out first the possibility that she's saying that she lives with her best friend. We, we know that, it, that BF it's a is boyfriend. boyfriend. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. unless you have one of those rare boyfriends that never wants to see you naked, I don't really see a problem. I don't yeah. see any obstacles. Okay. Rare boyfriends that never wants to see you naked. I feel like you're exaggerating <laughs> things. This might be someone who is just more private and like okay. is worried about the appearance to others of mm. oh, if there's a naked person at the house and we have a window open. Also, a lot of guys, and maybe these aren't the guys that you've dated, but mm -hmm. a lot of women that I talked to have had experience with these guys are very protective about other people seeing their girlfriend naked. And I've so, been that girlfriend. <laughs> okay. So you have dated these guys. You understand. <laughs> You've gotten yes. into uh, an argument about something about being naked in public that my boyfriend okay. didn't like. Yes. Wall covered in flowers and stuff like that. Yeah, okay. yeah. All right. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So maybe that's part of what she's dealing with right now is like you got a boyfriend who's trying to he's got a for my eyes only type of deal claim on you. Mm -hmm. If that's something you don't want, that's something that you either have to express to him and defend that boundary or compromise and be like, well, I'm going to not be naked at times when other people might see me. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I think windows are a big question in this. Do you have, <laughs> blind, do you have reliable <laughs> blinds or curtains uh -huh. or some type of tinting, uh, one way glass, you know, maybe your house is of one way mirrors and you can see on the outside, but other people look at it and just see themselves when the lights are off. It's unlikely. They don't do that in a lot of houses. You'd have to have that custom built. So <laughs> This is probably uh, not one of those situations. Yeah. I mean, I think the main advice is keep the house warm because mm, you depend mm -hmm. on clothes for warmth. That's a great, usually that's a great point. Yeah. yeah I, I, I am also kind of wondering like, is the obstacle the boyfriend or is it just more that like, she's like, okay, well, how do we generally change the culture of the apartment? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. How do I make this like a nude friendly environment? Uh -huh. Uh huh. Um, you could put a clothing optional sign on the door. <laughs> yeah, you could. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they make those for like beach houses mm -hmm. for like middle aged people that are like, I'm loose, I'm fun. Mm -hmm. Um, wipe well. <laughs> I'm just, I, I have a nudist yeah. father, and uh -huh. uh, it's important that you wipe well, or no one's going to want to sit in that chair when you're not around. Yeah, yeah. Uh, robes. Lots of hooks with robes, robes around. Robes for when a company comes mm -hmm. over, someone can hustle and get you. There's a robe yeah. in every room in case you're caught off guard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think there's a certain soundtrack, too, maybe, that goes with this kind of culture. Uh, like something little, tropical. Give us a little taste. Um. <laughs> something like the free advice season two. <laughs> intro music. Ba, 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 <laughs> you guys My are about butt's to get in this. the open air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. I think that's good. Yeah. You ready to start the episode? Absolutely. Here we go. Let's hit it. I'm totally naked. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't used to do this, but now it's going to be naked. Free advice. <laughs> Welcome to season two of Free Advice, boom, bitches! Boom, 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 boom. Do That's you us hitting last you. Yeah, yeah. Oh shit! It's so free. There's too Pelting much. Pelting your it. naked body. It's like a fire hose of advice. I wasn't on fire. I didn't think I was. Help! Maybe, I'm on fire. Do you have any advice? A match. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what this show is. Metaphorically, I do right. not support the fire hosing of protesters in Birmingham, Alabama, in the '60s. I just want to be very clear about that i know that's over 50 years ago now but still welcome to 2020 people <laughs> wow yeah do you see everything more clearly guys are you ready Quack. to take this year on Quack. Did you just quack like a dissatisfied duck when you make a joke, joke in, I don't like? I in 2016 about Hillary Clinton's campaign. I was saying like, she's going to run for re-election in 2020 uh -huh. and her slogan is going to be hindsight is 2020. 
<laughs> I was like, oh, damn, I'm thinking this up now. But in 2020, people are going to be annoying with this joke about 2020 meeting vision. And yeah. you just, this is my first time this year that I heard somebody do it. So thank you. Sweet. Were you, how annoyed were you on a scale of one to ten? I felt like Nostradamus. I was actually very pleased with myself because I predicted something that other people were too busy thinking about things that mattered to think about. And so I like get that satisfaction of, oh, yeah, I put in the time back in 2016. I was four years ahead jerking I, off yeah, my, jerking with my off jokes my... about 2020. <laughs> I <was. laughs> if I could have invested in that stock of 2020 <laughs> jokes being made in 2020 about vision, I would be a, a billionaire by now. Uh-huh. I should have bought Bitcoin is what I should have did. <laughs> Actually, Bitcoin in 2016, and I'd be well off. (laughs) Based on what you told me, I bought ten dollars worth of Bitcoin, which is not even. It's like one point zero 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 one three of a Bitcoin. That's a very defeating. (laughs) When you look at the actual amount of Bitcoin you own, it feels like a bummer. But then convert it into dollars, and you're good again. Um, But I was talking with someone about this, and they were saying now that now that that Bitcoin doesn't have that kind of one to one relationship anymore, they're trying to. They have different words for like smaller increments oh, of Bitcoin. Good. And I kind of forget what Itty the... Itty bitty coin. <laughs> <laughs> Little Bitcoin. <laughs> Just a Bitcoin. <laughs> I'm good no, at it. No, like, it was me. like Sam Tutu or something. It was completely unrelated. <laughs> no one knows who made Bitcoin. There's what? a name. It's like Takihosho Mashiki or something. It's not like Sam Bitcoin. <laughs> it's a Japanese or, or I know, I'm just otherwise kidding. Asian name. I don't yeah. know. It could be Chinese, but... Uh, I, I'm not linguistically uh, right. discerning in that way. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, I'd like to be. Let me just <laughs> let me say that's the main thing. I'm not, thing. <laughs> but I wish I was, and I'm not going to take any action to become that immediately. <laughs> I mean, if someone comes along in my life and uh-huh. is passionate about that, yeah. and wants to explain the difference, I'm going to pay attention. But it's not something that I'm going to seek out for the sake of this bit on the podcast. So yeah. Ta- yeah. Takahishi Mahoko or something like that <laughs> is, is the name of the person. I could look this up. Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. in the time that we spent making this bit. I could have looked this up and given you guys the real name of the person who made Bitcoin, but it's like, it's a pseudonym. If there's no real person. But, yeah. That's the kind of advice that, you pay for though. Exactly. <laughs> guys upgrade to the premium version. If you really want to know that person's name or Google it yourself, you little fuck. <laughs> You've got thumbs. You played this podcast. Yeah, uh, some of our listeners are, of the thumbless variety. I don't know. Um, I think that's interesting. One of the biggest innovations of our time, I would say, is Bitcoin. This is about to be a decentralized claim. Oh, uh-huh. cryptocurrency. Uh, currency. Yeah. Cryptocurrencies generally is as like a way of storing information and value, I think is going to be revolutionary in our lifetimes. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's is, the bet, I mean, right? Yeah. That's the bet. Like, is this going to become hugely workable and adoptable it's, or is it the problem is going to just be too much and it's not going to explode in the way that it theoretically could and I'm i think on team, like it will have yeah. problems and then there will be solutions to it but this organization of this decentralized uh power is like a better system mm-hmm. that will naturally win i think um compared to yeah. tying it to a government which is at the behest of corporate interests and political yeah um, yeah the uh, fluctuations that i think that this is going to be something that people believe in stronger i have exactly ten dollars worth of faith right now <laughs> in, in bitcoin <laughs> the advice i've heard from someone that i trust was uh just buy a little bit every week yep and just forget about it don't watch it don't yeah. get into the whole playing the market thing just buy like whatever is a totally losable amount of money mm-hmm. just do that uh, every week. And so when I remember, I do that. Yeah. Of like whatever I would have spent on a dumb, like on an ice cream cone or yeah, something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you would have never spent a single dime on an ice cream cone. I've bought so many ice cream cones in my life. You're but ignoring recently. the uh, trajectory of this beautiful person sitting in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> he wants really. Uh, All right. Then the next ice, ice cream, cream cone you want is on me. How about that? Buy me Bitcoin instead. No. Okay. I'm trying to make a point. And I also, I'm going to re-up my, I'm going to get put another $10 in the Bitcoin. Yeah. Listen, guys, if you give up a vice, people who are still using that vice fucking hate you and they will do anything to drag you back down into their hell. I don't eat ice cream anymore. And whenever it's a hot summer day and everyone's at the beach having a good time, I just become the Hitler of that occasion where everybody's just like, how are you going to fucking ruin this for us by not eating ice cream too? Yeah. And they will do anything. Just take one bite. I just want to see you put it in your mouth. Just, just take a little bite of ice cream. And I'm like, all right, if, if it means that much to you, like I'm not trying to ruin everybody's day, I'll do it, but I'm going to get a headache immediately. Cause I'm so like, 
Yeah. De sent de um, conditioned to this thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just, well, just be mindful of that's coming. If you quit something that all of your friends, if you all love to drink and you stop drinking, your friends are going to be annoying little fucks. Hopefully they're supportive and they understand that this is important to you. I think the annoyance goes both ways. I've been on both sides of this coin. Yeah. I've been on both sides of like the, like, one of my friends or someone in the group isn't drinking and you feel like, well, why aren't you participating in this camaraderie? And I'm also now, I don't really drink. You're the person who doesn't drink. Yeah. It's just, yeah. It's just awkward to be like, I'm choosing to say no to something because I don't like how it makes me feel. Even though like you are either, you do like how it makes you feel or you're ignoring the things you don't Mm -hmm. like about it. Um, It's you're an annoying piece of shit, no matter what. Well, it's reminding people <laughs> that you are acting out of the truth that they're aware of, of this is mm-hmm. bad for me and I value myself. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to do things that are bad for me. And they're like, yeah. but pff, aren't you going to use the same solutions that I like? They're looking for validation yeah. of we're all doing this together. That's why people don't like drinking alone, but they like drinking with groups. It's like, oh, it makes it feel okay. There's other people doing this thing that is damaging, but we all agree that the, yeah. the costs are um, outweighed by the benefits. Well, I think with for me the example of like i don't drink is also like well i do a lot of other things that are like yeah semi destructive of my physical yeah. being oh, to believe me extents. i hurt myself <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't don't worry about me being <laughs> non-toxic <laughs> i go home and just whip my leg until it bleeds i, I prefer self-flagellation to, to alcoholism it's, yeah <laughs> i'm kind of a, a silas from uh that Dan brown from D- D- angels and demons no fucking da sorry da i've got no reference point you didn't see you never read mm, the da vinci code nah the longest book i ever read i don't read books over like that's definitely pages. not a positive review can you imagine if that was just like the review on the back cover of a book it's the longest book i've ever read with no comment on the quality <laughs> and it's like a 300 page book <laughs> like, this says more about the reviewer yeah than just i was gonna say reviewed by joe schmo the dumb dumb <laughs> <laughs> that's a character it's, i'd like to see you flesh out it's it's his review on the back of a three-page brochure this the longest piece of literature i ever done wrote all right you didn't need to make him southern some of us are actually from that region and it's <laughs> it's offensive so should i be like a really like play a really dumb character but he's like really articulate he like enunciates no, really make him from new york no or accent. some other fucking dumb place that's not the south Okay, well, I could get mad at you for, like, insinuating that about New York. I know. <laughs> do it. It's all about choices. Have a ball. I don't, I, you know, I would do it, but I just don't want to send those kind of toxic vibrations through my body right now. I'm kind of, like, off anger, you know? Like who's So, that, like, you do you. But who's, who's that? Is that New York or is that L.A.? I don't know. It's just, like, snotty me acting like I don't drink but snotty acting like I don't Morgan. engage in anger. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know the type. Yeah. I, I get into that person, too. Yeah, um, I know. Rob, really, this this topic centers around like Rob being sort of like ascetic with many of his living choices. Yeah, yeah. But like, if you give up shit, you have room for other shit. So if you want to do things differently totally. from other people, you have to stop doing some things like other people. Yeah, and I think you have to take the the benefits or the potential benefits like really seriously. Yeah. Um. Can I tell a story? Yeah. Um. So. I assume <laughs> it's not going to, you're not going to say I have a little dick or something. Are you? <laughs> Don't tell that. This story. is the story of Rob's tiny dick. <laughs> no, you just said a story. You should have clarified. <laughs> um, no. So we've talked about it a few times on the podcast before, what? but both Rob and I go to burning man. Yeah. And, uh, we were part of a camp this year and very close to before the event actually happened. Rob asked about the paleo diet oh, options yeah, yeah. of the food and the organizers were kind of like, well, what the fuck? Like you should have told him basically like, we'll try to accommodate you, yeah. but like would have liked to know about it earlier. <laughs> so they had this, they didn't know him. They'd never met him. Um, they didn't know how charming he was obviously, or how handsome. Um, and then he shows up and Rob has just this like super spelt, but muscular, just like perfect tanned, like magazine photo. Kind Could of be torso. a stripper if I wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> if he wanted to, which, yeah. which he does. Um, life calls and they basically like took one look at him and were like oh okay like we understand how serious and nitpicky you have to be about your diet like if you want to look like that and you do look like that like yeah fine we we concede <laughs> basically thank you so there's a reason my point is that there's a reason to take it that seriously because you do get really great results if you hold yourself to that high standard but obviously it points out the discrepancy between our priorities because that's not mm-hmm. everyone's priority no 
I think there's a false uh, impression, though, that if you're doing that, you have to not focus on other things, that that's something that like, oh, well, if I, I, I don't really care about my body so much, I care more about like making music or more about um, building my company or raising my mm -hmm. family as if like working on your body or taking good care of your body would somehow hinder that other thing. <laughs> and I'm of the mindset that my any, kids love my washboard. Abs. Anything you do would be enhanced by you taking better care of your body. It's, it's yeah. like a essential fundamental skill that supports all other skills that you're trying to do. It's not something that gets in the way of them. So people will often say like, Oh yeah, I don't have time to, or I just don't have the energy to, or the priority. It's like, it gives you time and energy <laughs> for your other priorities. It's like the, yeah. if you're not doing, you can't afford to not take care of your body. You don't have to be vain about it. Like I am and use the <laughs> coconut oil and tan and shit like that. But the that's basics, my favorite part. <laughs> the coconut yeah. oil and the tanning. I don't want to do any of the hard stuff. You know, I just want to glisten. <laughs> yeah. You, you don't have to do like hair removal, take care of your body but yeah. the like basics of uh, having a movement practice of just like you regularly get enough movement that elevates your heart rate gives you some cardio and like some type of muscular stimulation you know like resistance training yeah. of some form and stretching doing all that shit uh just really gives you like the energy and it makes you, it emotionally regulates you yeah. I find if I don't work out for a little while, I notice how much anxiety I get back that I never noticed yeah. before, but was always there when I wasn't working out. Yeah. It's just constant thoughts. What do I do next? What should I do? I don't get that sense of calm. That's just so peaceful. And like, ah, if I have something important to do, I always go for a run or workout now before, because then I can actually be present. It's like, I got all that out and now I'm here. Yeah. That's great. <sighs> I, I, this is something that I've chronically struggled with. Um, and am very anxious and sometimes depressed as a result. And so I've tried to kind of like redefine what exercising is for me to make it more like, oh, movement. I should have moved my body and try to make it more simple. But I still wind up talking myself out of it a lot. So I'm still in that phase of experimenting with um, what types of exercise, when during the day, trying to build it in more regularly and trying to make it something that's fun and rewarding and uh you know, kind of hack my brain into reminding myself how good it feels, but like during it, after it, so that my brain remembers predominantly this is something that will really benefit us versus like, well, but my bed's warm or like, mm, well, I can do it later. You know, all those little like, I have guys some unsolicited advice for you. Yeah, please. This is terrible medical advice that's going to kill people if everyone follows it. But for Morgan, uh -huh. I feel qualified. Whatever okay. drugs you do, just try uh, playing around with exercise on those drugs. Uh-huh. Whatever that is, uh, if it's a psychedelic and it's like mind loosening of your your uh, concept of what exercise has to be mm -hmm. can be peeled back and you can just play. Yeah. Do that. If it's like a stimulant like caffeine, then you're working with that extra energy. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just like go uh, – blow open the idea of exercise as punishment or as a success failure or competitive paradigm. Mm -hmm. Cause I think that is the negative thing that everybody is looking at it as like, Oh, well I'm not going to be as fast as blank. So I shouldn't run. I'm never going to sing as good as R Kelly. So I shouldn't <laughs> fuck this 15 year old, whatever they're thinking. You, know? it's like, <laughs> you don't have to be the best in the world for it to be valuable to you and for it to um, help other parts of your life. Yeah, that's a really good point. You don't have to be a competitive eater to enjoy a meal. You don't have to, <laughs> don't have to slam Jeremy 56 to hot dogs. <laughs> Aren't you happy your parents fucked? Neither of them are on Jeremy, unless you're on Jeremy's <laughs> son. You shouldn't be listening to this. Anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you're on Jeremy's son listening to this right now, how can you help us get our, help our podcast reach a wider audience? Um, this dude pitched me on his agency. Yeah. Quick anecdote. Oh, pitched please. me on his agency, and he's like, we do have one big name star on our um, talent roster and it's ron jeremy <laughs> it's just like so maybe you want to work with him on one of your projects we could like hook you guys up and i was like okay <laughs> yeah maybe <laughs> i did not join that agency <laughs> what an oblique cry for help there um yeah so i really like your point about not having to do the best yeah. um i i've really moved away from and thankfully i'm at a point where i don't I don't so much compare myself to other people in that way, um, in this realm of my life at least, but I do, si since it is something that you 
build up you know your your ability to exercise mm-hmm. and then it kind of like goes away when you do it less often i think it could be hard it's a hard horse to get back on mm-hmm. is sort of what i'm saying like yes. just within yourself no, to be i, like, I want to acknowledge that oh it's not going to be like that run i went on that one time where i really nailed it and <laughs> it ran, sucks you know. for about i'd say two or three weeks sure where like if getting into an everyday routine you probably won't enjoy some of it or most of it for the first like maybe two weeks of getting back onto it. I would say at least the the beginning part of the workout yeah. you might or, or the end, depending on how hard you push yourself. But you don't need to, the other thing is the big mistake everybody makes is pushing themselves way too hard, yeah. getting really sore and then quitting because they committed. All right. Today is the first day of me doing a yeah. hundred pushups in a row every day. And it's the <laughs> start where you yeah. are is the fucking advice everybody's main yeah. mistake is failure to set the bar sufficiently low enough. So like if you join a class, an advanced fucking P90X class where everybody's ripped and you're not, it's going to be tuned for them. It's like, yeah, if yeah, I'm the, it, it, there's so many uh, yeah. metaphors for this that I, I, I want to go down, but like, yeah, we get it. Yeah. yeah design some a, a practice for yourself that works for your current, find your edge and brush up against it. Like whatever the limit is for you of that feels like it's too much, get to that space and then peel back. And like, as soon as it starts to feel like it's a little bit too far, this is literally like stretching. Yeah. But some people can touch the ground by bending over and other people can just touch their knees. If you can only touch your knees and you're trying to touch the ground, you're going to rip something. So if you're like, don't, don't force (laughs) yourself past your limit. Like whatever your limit is, is different from somebody else's. And also if somebody's just touching their knees when they can touch the ground, they're not getting a stretch. The point of exercise is individual. It's about like whatever your limit is, get to that and know it. And honestly, it's a beautiful way of knowing yourself because you're like, you start to remember, oh, that's, I can curl 35 pound weights. That's as much as I can lift with my bicep. And then you do that for a while and then you're like, oh, I can do forties now. Yeah. And you watch yourself grow. Yeah. Yeah. That's really satisfying. Yeah, I'm having that. I'm having that learning satisfaction arc um, by I'm learning to play the guitar, yeah. and that was something that years ago when I first picked up a guitar and someone was like, "Here's how you make a G chord," and I was mm-hmm. like, "Because my fingers <laughs> couldn't even begin to make that shape," yeah, um, and like push down hard enough, and and even in just playing guitar now, like. Every day for a couple of weeks, mm-hmm. I've seen an amazing and really, really satisfying and continually motivating um, amount of progress. Doesn't it feel like learning a language when you can suddenly have a simple conversation? Mm, you like yeah. have learned enough of the uh, component pieces of practicing a scale and doing this rhythm exercise right. and then doing an arpeggio or whatever, or playing a chord. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're like. Hmm, I want to ask where the bathroom is, or I want to know what, and then it just comes out. Like the thing in your head became yeah. an expressive, like understandable idea for another person. You're like, Oh yeah, I just had that thought or singing same way for me. Like, Oh, I just hit that note that I didn't know I could make that sound. And it just happened. Yeah. Um, but you have to have faith yeah. that it's going to happen when you're like struggling through the ugly parts where you hit the wrong note and you play off time and yeah. You know, yeah. privacy is so important for getting better at a skill because if you're always being evaluated by somebody else or you're always afraid that you are being evaluated by somebody else, you don't have the room to make the mistakes. You don't get like it's much harder to give yourself permission to uh, be bad at the thing for long enough to become good. Um, I totally agree. However, fun counterpoint. Oh, do it. Um, <laughs> Hit me with it. <laughs> Love sometimes fun sometimes people <laughs> fun counterpoint time <laughs> um, just so you know it's gonna be fun it's so fun <laughs> <laughs> there's no argument about whether or not it's fun but it is kind of fun <laughs> i'm gonna disagree with you but i'm just gonna say it's fun to just kind of soften it so a little bit because i'm a woman it. and i don't feel assert, like comfortable asserting <laughs> conflict. so agreeable about this <laughs> Like, listen, this doesn't even matter at all. And I basically, I yeah. should just go fuck myself. But great. Next topic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Way to lean back. Okay. Not I know my to mic technique is another really... skill that I've really improved at. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. I know. Yay me. Okay. Um, uh, if you, if you are uh, overly private yeah. in ah. what you're trying to accomplish oh, and yeah. you don't have someone A to hold you accountable or B, you're 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 too afraid to catch to overcome that threshold of someone might see me be bad. Yeah. To the point where you kind of don't do the work, you don't mm-hmm. show up in the first place, or you don't hold yourself accountable for the goal. Like that can also be a, a fallback. It depends. I think it depends honestly on your personality type. If you have sort of an, a more introvert versus more extrovert configuration. Yeah. 
And I would say the goals of the skill. If your skill that you're trying to practice is a public performance skill or something that requires other people to be present, oh, you do at some point have God. to experience. it's totally different. Yeah, you have it's to experience so that like it's like running without shoes on and then putting shoes on or something like it, it's a. I'll tell it, you it what really it's changes. Like. Okay, tell I'll tell you what it's like because I just had this exact experience yeah, where well, I was like practicing guitar at yeah. my, at home, like on my couch, like deep to deep, feeling like, oh, I totally got this. I get on a stage and I try to perform the exact same song, yeah. and my fi- I'm nervous and my fingers are like, and I can't even make the shapes, and it's and it's like a completely different yeah. experience. Yes, so I've it's like this. in order to get good at the guitar performing, you can't just sit on your couch all day and. You know, that's but but you have to start somewhere. If you have to be thinking about it while you're doing it, I think you don't have it down well enough to perform it. That's exactly what the guitar instructor I just went to. I took a first. If you're like still figuring things out while you're doing it, then like you should be able to have a conversation about something else and do it automatically. Or like what I do if I'm memorizing a poem or a speech or something is like, can I do it while playing a completely new character so that I'm focused on instead like just doing it really fast or through like another yeah. character's voice mm-hmm. where I'm not even thinking about the words that's automatic. And what I'm thinking about is this other thing or like while I'm washing dishes or anything where it yeah. doesn't require my concentration, yeah. then I know, okay, I've got this right. it's muscle memory now. Right. Because what he was saying is especially maybe this particularly applies to guitar, but I'm sure it's somewhat universal is that if there's, if it's not second nature, if there's room for your own kind of self doubt and anxiety mm-hmm. to seep in, then you get tense. And as soon as you're tense, yeah. there goes your ability to play the guitar because you have to have this loose kind of repetitive motion to it, and it has to be relaxed and it has to be rhythmic. Mm-hmm. And as soon as you're thinking about what you're doing, you're going ooh ooh ooh, ooh I can't make a C, which yeah. is what I did. Um, <laughs> you are a total mess. Mm-hmm. So. What a fun little swath of random self improvement lessons. Yeah, this is good. This is we could just change the podcast yeah. to this, but let's not. How about instead we get to the lightning round? But you, but you. There's a storm coming. <clears throat> All right. Uh, do we have a theme for today's episode? I don't know, Rob. Why don't you tell us? Since you seem to be more clear about it than I am. <laughs> yeah, guys, we got a theme. This one is about sexuality. Sexual expression, attracting others, dating them. The body or no? The body. The body. The body. The body. Yeah, the body. That's sexuality, Morgan. Not all sexuality is related to the body. Okay. I'm willing to take this diversion. (laughs) Tell me about some. I'm I'm a very materialist and I'm a man and I have all these, you know, things about sex is about just getting the jizz out. So tell me. What else could sex be except getting the jizz out? Well, I think anyone who's had the experience of having sex with someone who is like physically attractive, but you don't have an emotional connection to or an intellectual connection to, and there's not that spark, knows exactly what I'm talking about. It's like the physical act of sex. Can you explain it for... (laughs) (laughs) Can you not alienate most of the audience? (laughs) Come on, this is a pretty universal experience. Like, for it's more than people. just body to body. <laughs> for unattractive people, it's, it's not that frequent that they're having sex with people <laughs> that are just hot because they're not. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's a very like hot privilege thing to say <laughs> that most people fuck people that they're not emotionally attached to. A lot of people that have sex with just a couple people in their lives, and it's always someone that they're in love with. I'd say there's probably more people like that. It's just not our friends. Um, okay. Well, now I have my <laughs> l- the hot privilege tail between my hot privilege my legs. My bad. My bad. That's okay. Um, I did but just my do point- some shaming. Some mm, yeah, internet cancel but- culture, cancel Morgan. <laughs> hashtag. Now the podcast is just Rob forever. Um, yeah, boys. Until he does something that's like <laughs> inappropriate and then it's just silence. Dude, what if that was like a king? No, then you come back. We bring oh, back Morgan because I, I did back. something worse and we have to keep... Uh, throwing each other off of the throne by making oh, okay. bigger and bigger faux pas. Okay. Well, my, okay, but anyway, my point is mm-hmm. a lot of people, I'll say, have had the experience where yeah. um, just because there's like a physical attraction or like objectively or on paper, yeah. it's someone, you know, you could be attracted to or would be attracted to. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be like the best sex of your life or even good sex because i think the best sex comes from a place where you have a connection that's beyond break it down what physical. makes that connection 
Do you know the Ooh. components? Don't just make it some mystical, magical bullshit that's all behind the veil. We know there's real things. Um. Okay. Uh. I think some of what that sort of like sexual spark is is the right balance, or maybe a little bit of this, a little yep, bit of that, yep. between familiarity uh-huh. and mystery. Uh huh. Someone who's familiar enough that they know how to actually turn you on and yep. what is going to be pleasurable to you. They know you that well yep. and you're comfortable receiving that from them. But also there's enough unpredictability and spontaneity that it keeps you on your toes. Boom, boom. Yes. What an answer. Tr- Morgan, you for the win. <laughs> the words I use are trust and freedom. I'm like sure. contact and space. If you have too much contact, it's suffocating. If you have too much space, you don't trust it. You don't. You know, you're yeah. not close enough to them to even touch. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's really the formula. Yeah. And the other thing is like a, a kind of like intellectual or emotional just symmetry or compatibility maybe mm-hmm. where it's like when yeah, you really know enough. Yeah. When you know enough about how that person thinks about the world and the language they use to see how what you're doing with them affects yeah. them and to, to know that you're on the same wavelength with a somebody. common language. Let's say, yeah, like you don't have to literally speak both, you both speak English, mm-hmm. but you do have to have some way of uh, contacting one another. It could be through dance. You know, mm-hmm. that can be very yeah. hot cross-cultural dance partners who just, <laughs> they communicate with their bodies and that um, You know, you're really later. showing your hot privilege by, uh, <laughs> by telling us about what it's like to have a connection with a hot dance partner. <laughs> I wish... Not, you know, for most of the ugly population, people, they don't, they don't dance with people that are hot. <laughs> you're right. And it's one of the things I'd like to fix about the world because it's one of the great joys that is being robbed of people as we... Uh, alienate them from the true power and beauty of their bodies. Um, the other thing I want to say about this yeah. issue <laughs> to sell it back to them, this, this the is hot. gym memberships and supplements That's... and other ab exercise bullshits. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. If it's a wheel on a stick, you don't need it. You're being um... poisoned by sugar. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actively choosing to be poisoned by sugar. Um, you think that you think sugar is doing it? No, I think you were given sugar as a baby to stop you from crying as soon as you came out of the womb and you've been an addict ever since like everybody else. Probably. Um, But I'll take it because sugar was the only thing that loved me. (laughs) It was the first Um, stimulation and it is a drug and it is the, yeah, it, yeah, it did give you that love when, yeah. I'm aware that I still do that where I'm like, I do too. Being nurtured by something sweet. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just apples for me now instead of like Kit Kats. Marginally Um, better. (laughs) <laughs> i all the, mm, i wonder what has actually more sugar an apple or a kit kat here's the important thing that that reductive uh reasoning leaves out is the rate of absorption so the mm. uh, i believe it's called the glycemic index of the uh-huh. thing is a feature of the fiber so eating an apple is much healthier for you than of drinking course. apple juice oh, oh oh i see yes yes yes. same you could squeeze it. the apple but if you're not getting the fiber from it it increases the rate of absorption. So you get a sugar spike and then a crash and then that somehow affects your insulin. And then there's some other bullshit that happens. Anyway, it's worse for you to drink fruit juices than it is to eat fruits. So you should not blend your fruits. uh, If you are worried about the sugar content you're taking in. Yeah. Well, the other thing, the Kit Kat to to apple comparison is like, even if overall there are more like grams of sugar in an apple, let's say a Kit Kat has zero nutritional value and an apple has like other things that are, there are probably carbohydrates and and fat in a Kit Kat. Um, I don't, I mean, I I guess I'm talking about the, the micronutrient profile and, and then when you get those nutrients from something that occurs in nature, it comes packaged within it the tools yeah. for its digestion and, yes, and your yes. body's you know ability about. to use those. Yeah. Yeah. We evolved to eat whole foods, not things that are composites of lab made chemicals. Franken foods. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, yeah. do I ever not remember what we were talking about beforehand? Who cares? We nailed it. People we are nailed loving it. this right now. People are fucking, we just high five. <laughs> <laughs> People are loving it. All oh, right. I know what I wanted to yeah, say. Yeah, it was yeah. about hot privilege. All right. The other thing I want to say is like, beauty is completely in the eye of the beholder. Disagree. And I'm so thankful that what? Go on. I mean, disagree. okay. Yes. There are certain things that are like universally more attractive mm-hmm. than, than other things, but I'm really always, um, encouraged by how diff the, the differences between like what even people that seemingly are similar kind of have in like who they're attracted to and who yeah. they're not. Um, and yes, there are people who are just kind of like 
to most people attractive or to most people not attractive. And yeah. there are things like facial symmetry. We've evolved to be sure. that way, basically. Um, facial symmetry is uh, theoretically an indicator of susceptibility to here's, pathogens. Here's my <laughs> – uh, there are different strateg- successful strategies for being attractive. Mm. But the, um, the ways that people are ugly are pretty universal. Mm, mm-hmm. Like – Thing like uh, yeah. unibrows. Mm, I would even say that there are <laughs> there are people who can who would find that sure. attractive. That's not really a bad one, but like um, things like disfigurement and um, b- indications of poor health or mobility mm-hmm. are fairly universally unattractive. Although you and, may see someone overcoming that as like a resilience, which yes. is sort of an internal quality that's Absolutely. attractive. Um, yeah. People that I know uh, who um, suffer from a disability, say, are in a wheelchair, I've heard speak about the type of men that want to date them and the ones that fetishize Mm -hmm. um, that part of them. And they find it very unattractive that a person is attracted to this thing that they're basically attracted to the perceived weakness or inability of that person. Mm -hmm. And um, if that's what you think someone likes about you, I think it's a... Tough to, yeah. It's not something that you want to be liked for, basically. Yeah. For most people. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Is there something that you? Is there something about you that if someone were like, "Ooh, I really like you because of your, I don't know, some strange feature that you have," where uh, you'd be like, "Okay, that's kind of cool uh, and flattering," because it's the thing that I hate about myself. Um, I don't hate that much about myself anymore. But Fair. Uh, hate's a strong uh, word. It, well, no, it, it, there's stuff that I hate. I'm sure, yeah. but. I'm not that aware of it or, uh, I, I just, as a general rule of thumb, people who are very, who are more than average, who are highly uh, physically beautiful or are highly rich, don't like thinking that the main thing people like about them are their looks or their money. Mm-hmm. That's just, it, it doesn't feel good to think that that's right. why people want to be around you is because of this thing right. that you either have little control over anymore or you're not actively doing still. It's just mm-hmm. like. Um, people don't like being appreciated for those things primarily by the people that they want to be close with. Yeah. Especially if they don't tie into like values that person has about like the kind of person they want to be. Someone though, especially if they're born that way. Yeah. Right. Someone who like started fat and then like really worked out and lost a bunch of weight. Like Jared from subway probably (laughs) loved it when those kids were like, you're so hot now. He probably loved all those kids (laughs) peppering him with weird sexual compliments. (laughs) Wow, how many Subway sandwiches can you fit into the gap that's now in your pants, Jared? <sighs> um, so should we get to the Bill party Gates. episode about when Bill Gates? <laughs> <laughs> so Bill Gates, Jared Fogel, and Jeffrey Epstein are all... <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, let's go to the next part of the episode. Um, I'm ready to <laughs> abandon this. Um, fun, though. So much fun. Yeah, I'm scared. So let's, oh, let's move on. You're scared. For my reputation. Why? When I run for president, this uh-huh. shit is resurfacing, no doubt. Yeah. And they're going to sure. say, this guy thought it was funny to make jokes about the worst thing in the world. And I'm going to be like, oh, fuck yeah. I was a dumb kid. I was only 28. <laughs> <laughs> I was only a fully capable adult. I was adult. only like <laughs> Almost know, an 30. adult for a full decade. <laughs> Probably couldn't even draft me anymore if you wanted to. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's get on to the lightning round. Are you Are you complete? Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I'm complete no matter what happens here. <laughs> Great. <laughs> lightning round. <laughs> okay. So basically, I might get some if you know what I mean in a bit. <laughs> so what do I do exactly? Asks Timmy, my man. <laughs> Timmy, my man. Timmy, First my man. First of all, Probably so happy dude. for you. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think we can safely assume that it's a dude. Um, I, obviously I want to know more about the context cause that would inform my advice, but I think that knowing what I know, um, what do you know? <laughs> well, about Timmy, my man, very little, but about sex in general, like, oh yeah, you, I probably have some things that you would benefit mm, from hearing. Oh, well, I believe it. Uh huh. Um, if I'm assuming this is your first time. Other or second time, you know, somewhere early in your sexual career. I think so. So, um, I think that 
if I look back to myself as a young woman yeah. before I was uh, a slightly older woman with more experienced sexual partners, what I was looking for um, in a sexual partner was not for someone to know every fucking thing in the world. Yeah. Cause that's not the expectation. Um, what I wanted was just someone who I had a connection with and liked mm -hmm. And, um, I actually believe my first partner was, I was dating them. We were in love, you know, it was a whole thing. Um, I really just, I didn't expect it to be perfect. You know, I knew, I knew a lot of horror stories about people losing their virginity in mm -hmm. circumstances that they look back on and were not so into. Mm -hmm. Um, and all I really wanted was for someone to kind of be there through the ups and downs of whatever this potentially awkward, potentially painful experience was going to be for me because you have to remember as as the guy in this equation if we're again talking about a a boy girl p and v situation is that um for a woman's first time there could easily be a lot of pain and emotion yeah. associated with this so really just someone who uh is going to kind of figuratively and maybe literally hold hand hold my hand through this experience yes. of whatever this question mark is going to be for whatever the possible mess is whatever the thing i'm super insecure about about my body is yes. just someone who's going to be there um and take care of me ask me what feels good be conscientious of like how i'm experiencing what's being done to me or what mm -hmm. we're doing together um and then someone who is going to be there afterwards yeah. for maybe a kind of debrief or just hanging out mm -hmm. and having some chill time afterwards together. I don't need some kind of like dick wielding stud. Right. Um, That's a mistake. Put it in the right hole would be one piece of tactical advice, which is subjective, but yes, <laughs> put it in the hole. She is expecting it in, which you may have to ask. <laughs> sure. Sure. Yes. You're ask. just going to assume that Consent. she's a, a, a vaginal preference. Yes. <laughs> this is 2020, Morgan. <laughs> I don't think you can just assume things like that anymore. Yeah. Um, the other the, the other tactical piece of advice I have. All sexualities are welcome on this podcast. I just want to let course. any anal preferring. Virgins. Of, of any, yes. Any anal preferring virgins that yeah. uh, listen to this. You're welcome here. Um, the other thing that I would want to say to you is take your time. Mm -hmm. There is no amount of foreplay that's too much foreplay. So take your time, get her wet because that's going to take probably a longer experience arc than you getting hard and yeah. then coming. So take your time, ask her what brings her pleasure. If she, she may not know, just touch her gently at first and slowly and just watch how she reacts. Yeah. And then you can always make it harder faster if she asks for it, but you can't, uh, there's a, there's usually so, such thing as too hard in in a way than than something that's too soft in a mm -hmm. way that would be disruptive or painful. Um, so just take it slow. Ask ask her for feedback and questions and pay attention to her um, and tackle it together. Yeah, um, I beautifully answered. My recap or take would be just. Start by trying to let go of your expectations and attachment to any particular outcome or story mm -hmm. that you want to tell other people about this event. Um, and then slow down, be present, um, pay attention to your partner and how they're reacting to things and pay attention to yourself and how you're reacting to things. And you can give them permission implicitly to communicate about that by communicating it yourself and asking questions. Do you like that? Um, without over interviewing the person. Yeah. You know, right. um, and it's okay to not be confident and to not do everything that you think needs to be done for this day or this uh, occasion. Um, it's not about crossing some finish line. It's about enjoying the, I don't want to say race because you're going to come really fast. And, Journey. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's like yeah. the point of a song is not the end of it. It's what happens <laughs> as it's happening. So like, yeah, just enjoy all, all the pieces of it. And, you know, if there's no bridge in the song yet or whatever, you want to make a metaphor for, um, uh, 
inseminating someone and raising a child together, um, that's okay. You can still have a pleasurable sexual experience that falls short of furthering the species, which is the reason that you want to do this, that we all want to do this, just to remind everybody. <laughs> you're allowed to forget about that, use a condom, be safe. If you uh, put penis in vagina, use a condom. Yeah, I think I think and lots of lube, whether natural or artificial. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if she is not dripping wet, do more stuff. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Before um, you put it in. <laughs> yeah, unless she is unable to do that, in which case, um, and she still wants to try, then just go very slow and use um, uh, store bought lubricant. Yeah. That is compatible with the type of condom that you're using. Uh, yeah, and just enjoy each other's bodies. Enjoy this like weird, vulnerable moment. Like, yeah. think about like give yourself permission to be bad and to ooh, not be as Ds. good as what. <laughs> and just also forget about porn. It's it's meant <laughs> like if that's what you if that's uh, your yeah, yeah, idea yeah. of what sex looks like, just remember that that is about as realistic as a as the matrix is to like a fighting actual martial arts or something it's it's stylized for the camera it's not people don't actually fly through the air and kick each other in the face 10 times before landing that's the kind of porn i watch <laughs> i know you do you sick fuck <laughs> okay uh yeah. you feel good about this i do answer? good too. luck have fun yeah let us know how it goes yeah definitely write <laughs> us back <laughs> all right uh Next question. Pew, 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 pew. Um, okay. Brian Bess TH9 says, is trying to start a business a turn off to a girl? I'm a guy who's 23 and about to graduate college with a finance degree. But instead of looking for a job, I'm trying to set up a painting and drywall business. I decided that the financial skills are applicable to a business owner. I have a lot of painting and drywall experience too. Uh, of course, I'm just an entrepreneur at heart and would like to get into owning many different businesses. I'm afraid that if I tell this to a girl, she'll hear unemployed with an unstable future. My friends are getting normal nine to five jobs. I'll honestly probably work a lot more than that for probably less pay. I would like to find a wife and have a family though. Do you think telling a potential girlfriend that I'm trying to start my own business would be a turnoff? Five question marks. Okay. Um, I have a lot to say about this as someone who, as a woman, as a can I, entrepreneur, can entrepreneur I, with a business. Can I answer it quickly first? <laughs> Please. Maybe. <laughs> um, here's what I think. The right person who you would end up with and start a family with and have a good connection with is going to love that about you. Is going to love that you have an entrepreneurial spirit yes. and that you have... I mean, and you have a practical degree. Mm -hmm. You are using your skills. You're making yourself marketable. Most businesses fail. And if you can remember that and go into it and be reminded that like what your, pri well, be reminded of whatever your priorities are. If your priority is like, number one, like find a girlfriend, start a family, maybe taking a giant financial risk isn't the right thing yes. for you. Um, but if you're just graduating from college and starting a family is a ways in the future, you have time. This is, a, yeah, you have time and you may always regret not starting a mm -hmm. business. You can always take a nine to five yep. job and you may have to. Um, and, you know, I, I would just say, choose as, to. what? You may choose to. Sure, sure. You may choose to. I. You can be homeless. That is a choice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No, you're right. You're right. Um, it sounds like a it sounds like something that you've thought through that applies to the skill set that you have and I think that you know you you should go for it and you can highlight the positive elements like mm -hmm. of that on a date with someone and and yeah if if the right if there's a, someone who comes along and they're really looking for answers about the kind of financial stability you can't guarantee at 23 then you guys have different plans and different timelines Here's the question not being asked that I think you are asking yourself is will that girl, Stephanie, across the class from me that I really like, will she like me as an entrepreneur? There's probably someone that is filling in this role in your head mm. that you know is looking kind of sideways at this idea in your mind. Maybe she isn't really, but here's the thing. There's going to be other girls and whoever it is currently that you're worried wouldn't like this. Maybe that's not a good person for you to be with. And 
I totally understand the desire to throw away all of your ideas of who you are in order to fit somebody <laughs> else's ideal. It's very attractive because, man, if you just had them, life would be complete, right? Yeah. <laughs> Been down that road before, yeah. gotten the thing that I wanted and thrown away my uh, visions of who I wanted to be. Yeah. And it, they're never worth it. It's They're and not. You may find at the end of the path of starting your own business the same thing. You may go, oh, actually, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. But you have that experience under your belt at the end of the day. Don't chase anything down just for that feeling of like, then I'll be whole, then I'll be useful, then I'll be worthwhile. Yes. The only person that you can convince to like yourself is you, really. Like, And that's the important one. I guess you can convince other people to like you, but you're convincing them to – if you're changing things about who you would like to be in order for them to like you – you're just setting yourself up for later resentment of like, I took that nine to five for you. And mm, then you want, yeah. you don't even like, you know, um, yeah. if it's conditional, if you're changing who you are then here's where this is complicated though. There are choices you can make that make you attractive to a wider or more narrow select section of the population. Yeah. If you had told me, I actually think this is a very attractive business idea. It was, we were working with your hands. You're doing something tangible. A lot of people would find that like, oh, that's pretty cool. He's like helping people build their homes and their businesses and their shelter. He's like doing a real yeah. necessary. It's sexy. Yeah, it is. It's like more than if you were going to be a, a markets analyst or whatever. It's like, it's kind of nebulous. <laughs> you guys are sexy too in a different way. <laughs> yeah. Like it's just a, a smaller range of people understand why that's valuable. Mm -hmm. Whereas this is a tangible thing that you can explain it. And I can see a picture in my head of how you're helping a person. Yeah. And that is, I believe appealing. Um, the thing is you could be choosing to be a toenail sculptor where you're going to sculpt uh, important women from history only with toenails. And that's like your thing that you really believe in. It's going to make you appealing to a narrower sector of the population. About the width of a toenail clipping. <laughs> There's going to be fewer people who are into this. However, if you dedicate yourself to that, it may take longer. But if you fully embody that and like express yourself through that and stand up to the haters or what are the people who tell you not to do that? And you find your version of success through that. You there really will nail be it. people. Yeah. You really nail it. There are going to be people. There are going to be people who are attracted to you for that. Mm -hmm. Anyone who has been able to totally buck the criticisms of society and say, fuck it, this is my life and I'm living it the way that I want to is inevitably attractive to people who are if wanting to do successful. that, <laughs> you, you, whatever, but it doesn't need to be my monetary success. You could be a recluse. Right. You could be someone who just travels around the country collecting toenail clippings. And th eventually if you're doing this with enough commitment and passion, if that's your thing, and I don't recommend it, I'm just giving this as an, uh, right. an extreme example. It can be esoteric. Is what Some you're people will look who are, stuck in their nine to fives and made all these compromises will be like, holy fuck, do you represent freedom to me? Mm. Like, wow, you're not, I'm yeah. just worried about what my mom thinks and you're out there fucking collecting <laughs> toenails to, and they'll love you or yeah. they may not want to have sex with you or have kids with you, but there you'll find that eventually there are other people who will be like, wow, I really respect the shit out of the way you live your life on your own terms. Yeah. I think you'd be a good role model. Yeah. And I think the other thing to say with this particular issue in mind is that this is the perfect time to take this sort of a risk yeah. before you have a yes. family, before you have other people depending on you for their financial well-being. Yes, absolutely. People out of fear and a scarcity mindset will settle for the package deal of just, yeah, like give me the safe job, give me the safe partner, and I'm done growing when I'm out of school. And I see this happen to a sad majority of people that I think at some point in their 20s, Sometimes in their teens, they kind of settle into a groove and just become responsible, dutiful people who are set and have this basically have the skills and the personality that they will die with. They'll make incremental changes within their fields, um, but maybe they'll have a crisis at some point and that will shake them out of their way of doing things. But I think that this is a common tragedy. I don't want it to happen to you. I, the other thing I want to say as a, another fun counter argument, um, now having, <laughs> now having gone out and eschewed the, um, nine to five lifestyle and gone for the entrepreneurial path, I will say 
it is terrifying. Yeah. It, there is a lot of anxiety and existential crisis that comes with this path. Oh, yes. And so I do really understand why someone would stay within something that's more secure, um, like a nine to five job, something that gives them some satisfaction, doesn't maybe impinge too much on what they want to do in their personal life and just gives them a paycheck. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. However, if you're someone who is and has an entrepreneurial spirit, like it seems like you do, um, to squelch that and go for something safer, I think you won't be happy with that. Mm -hmm. You'll always be asking yourself, what if? Yeah. Yeah. Don't leave yourself with that regret. Yeah. Give yourself the gift of the answer to the question, what if I did it? What if I tried? Yeah. Yeah. And it won't be a one-time thing where you probably just try and commit. You might back down, regret, and cycle back through it, but that's okay. It's, um, it takes support and resources to veer from the path. And I don't know what your situation is in terms of money available to you, in time, terms of social support available to you. Uh, it's important to have those things. And I would say, I won't speak for Morgan, but at least for myself, my ability to even go to college, but then leave college and not take a consulting job, which a lot of my friends were doing was dependent on the fact that I didn't have student loans to pay Mm -hmm. and I didn't have, um, like a child or a partner who was expecting me to get them pregnant and have a child quickly. Um, and some of those are things that I was able to choose for myself, such as the partner situation and the expectations that I was going to allow to be on myself or have for myself and others I was just born into, which is totally a function of privilege. And I know that even if I wasn't as privileged, there would have been opportunities that I might not have taken, but there are opportunities, even if you aren't born into money to find scholarships, to find, it's just harder. It's Mm -hmm. just more work. And yeah, you have your own limitations for how much you want to exploit those resources or gain them for yourself. But, um, you can acquire social and financial capital to chase. I mean, you know, this stuff better than me if you studied this. So (laughs) fucking just go for it, man. Do the business. Look at the smiling faces on people when you put up a perfect ass wall and just feel that joy and just be like, yeah, I fucking did that. And then shake their hand take their money, take less money than your friends and be happier with it because you found meaning in doing what you want to do on your own terms instead of what somebody else is doing to exploit your labor. Yeah. And hopefully down the road, you'll be taking more money than your friends. Exactly. This yeah. is a growth um, strategy that you're choosing. Yeah. It's not the safe one, but it has a higher ceiling yeah, and a lower floor. All right, Great. guys. That's all we got for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's more than what we had for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We really stretched. Uh, we're going to be sore tomorrow. Gonna start. <laughs> Our advice muscles are going to be filled with lactic acid. My, uh, I was going to say my butthole is going to be so loose from all the shit came out of it. I was going to tell you that, but for other reasons, <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you guys guess what that might be. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cause you got your head so far up it. Oh, oh, and I have a pretty large head. I was going to say, yeah. I was going to say, did you do something in December? Yeah, I kind of just put my mouth like this. <laughs> <laughs> you put a balloon in your mouth. I just and let inflated it my head. <laughs> Um, yeah. Yeah. All so right. that thus concludes, I guess, our, the first episode of season two of free season advice. Two. How do you think it went? Really good. I can feel some of the rust still on us. Mm. I think we're going to come back with a greater focus, but yeah. I'll just say my goal for this is to give people, um, c- good company, mm. people like yeah. us or people who like us. Yeah. And I think we did that with this episode. Yeah. Thought provoking warmth. You can feel the love between you and me. Giggles. Giggles. Joy. And uh, ex- exploration of other emotions as well. Yeah. Honesty. That's, I think we're, mm. we're being real. And yeah, sometimes we're fake and we hide behind humor and all that. But like, eh, it's compelling to me. Yeah. Like, well, welcome to the club of everyone. Um, yes. Yes. <laughs> we don't do it so much. Some people do it so much. That I, it, it's oh, the right yeah. balance for me yeah. and for people who are like me or like me, I think. Yeah. Did you, did, is that a phrase you just came up with and you're like flexing it a little? Well, I heard it uh, come out of my mouth about 30 seconds ago. And I really liked it then. So I said it again about 10 seconds ago. And I'm like, yeah, maybe there's going to be a third time. And then no, it's... Third, perform- yeah. the third performance is where I think it's really going to hit its stride. <laughs> All right, guys. See you next week on Free Advice, and, a uh, show uh-huh. for people. <laughs>
<laughs> like me or who like me. <laughs> um, send us your questions to freeadvicepodcast at gmail.com. We really want to hear from you yeah. and what you want our advice on specifically. Yeah. We love hearing from yeah. you guys. All right. Sweet dreams.